name is Rene Matiel. I'm an undergraduate student, mechanical engineering student at California Polytechnic State University um, in San Luis Obispo. I'm here this summer at the University of Michigan uh, to do research on a project uh, called the Novel Smart Excitation System for Complex Structures. Um, I worked alongside Alex Hold Holness from uh, the University of Maryland, Baltimore County, and under the supervision of uh, Professor Bogdan Aparanu uh, in the Acoustics and Vibrations Laboratory. Um, now, before I go into what I did exactly this summer, I wanted to go give a little bit of background as to why the research I'm doing is important. Um, uh, for any mechanical structure or, or system that is uh, dynamic in nature, um, they tend to suffer from a premature failure due to vibrational excitation. Now, to better predict uh, the system's life and, uh, and to hopefully prolong it, it's important that we uh, understand how the system responds to the to excitation, uh, vibrational excitations. Uh, this is also called uh, the force response. Uh, in particular, in the lab I was working on, we're, int uh, we're interested in um, finding the force response for turbine blades, uh, also called blisk or bladed disks, uh, pictured here in uh, this picture here. Um, so uh, now before I go into more detail, well, there's a couple things I wanted to cover uh, that are important that are important for you to understand what I did this summer. Um, now, what exactly is force response? Um, well, pretty much one of the terms that, that's incorporated in this is uh, resonant frequencies, or also called na natural frequencies. And what resonant frequencies are, in a crude definition, is uh, where a system's oscillations peak uh, relative to the other frequencies. So, for example, this uh, plot down here, um, you can see um, it's a, this is a plot of amplitude of displacement of the system versus frequency, and within this frequency range, we have uh, two peaks where, where uh, the system resonates. Um, another, uh, the Tacoma Narrows Bridge here on the right is another example of where uh, resonance frequencies could be detrimental to a system. As you can see, it caused the collapse of this, of this bridge because the winds uh, swayed it at a certain uh, frequency that it hit resonance and the, the displacements uh, am, uh, amplified and caused it to collapse eventually. Uh, and also another important concept is uh, mode shapes. Now mode shapes um, is the shape or deformation, or deformation that the system takes at, at the resonant frequency. So these are the, these are the shapes that, uh, that are the lower energy state um, shapes that these systems take uh, when, uh, when you hit resonance. So these are uh, some examples of mode shapes of a rotor blade and a car disc brake. Um, the rotor blade here has, these are the frequencies at mode 1, 636. It takes on a certain uh, shape. And then you go on to mode 2, it takes on another shape. And so it's important to know how your system behaves uh, under certain uh, frequencies. Now, uh, my particular uh, research this summer was more involved in how do we measure this force response in the laboratory. In particular, uh, bladed disks or turbine uh, uh, disks. Um, now we, we wanted to develop a, a system that will excite the blade, and so that we can get better uh, measurements for the force response. Um, we're emphasizing on turbine blades in particular, but we're hoping to broaden this to like other complex structures, hence the name uh, complex geometry. Um, Current methods right now use a that used to uh, excite the systems are stingers, which excite the structure through a rigid contact with a shaker. So the, the sh there's a shaker with a long rod that attaches to the structure, and then it's excited that way. Uh, another another way is uh, using the speaker systems, which uh, excite the structure via pressure waves. Now the issue with these methods, the stinger, for example, it adds inertial effects or that uh, that may change the structure's property, which is detrimental to the measurements as far as the force response goes. And uh, the speaker systems uh, for high frequency excitation require a large amount of power and uh, become larger in size, which is in, impractical when you're measuring uh, small structures or complex structures like a turbine blade. Now, the goal this summer is to develop an excitation system for complex structures, in this particular case, BLISCs that is effective at high frequencies up to 80 kilohertz for measurement of force response. Um, and my mentor, uh, Dr. Bogdana Brown, uh, proposed a, uh, a design that uses uh, 
something called piezoelectric stacks pictured here. Um, now, the way these work is when you add a, when you induce a voltage to them, they they uh, expand or contract. So if you so if you add an alternating voltage, it's going to oscillate, which is what we need to excite the um, the turbine blade. Now my this is where I where I came in. Uh, my first duty was to implement or design a some kind of a clamping mechanism where we could actually um, apply the the stacks to the blade and then apply the voltage and then excite uh, the blade. So this is a uh, the design that I catted on SolidWorks. Um, to go over it briefly, uh, it's pretty it's a pretty simple design. What we want to do is just create a a novel concept that will help us prove the concept before uh, we move any for into any development stages, I guess you could say. Um, as you can see here, we have uh, the piezoelectric stacks that go that go into this set screw that is then screwed into the clamp. This 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 clamp is then adjusted using this uh, precision screw, so we could uh, better uh, so we could uh, adjust the pr uh, the pre-stress on the on the blade, and then on the on the stacks we have a force sensor attached to the surfaces, so we can measure the force applied to the to the blade as well. And again, this is a very uh, rudimentary uh, design. We just wanted to prove the concept before uh, we move any further with it. Now, this is where most of my work was done this summer for the entire two months I was here. It's using a software called ANSYS, which is a finite element analysis software, and uh, what we want to do is better understand how the clamp was, was going to respond in the frequency range from 80, 800 hertz to 80 kilohertz. Uh, we wanted to we wanted to get a do a modal and pre-stress harmonic analysis, and uh, and then go on from there. What this does uh, is it breaks up your 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 design into smaller elements, and then calculates whatever you needed to calculate, and then kind of superimposes all those solutions to give you a more accurate solution. Um, as you can see, this is the ANSYS uh, mesh model that I used. Um, the geometry was simplified to reduce the complexity of uh, other calculations. And then, uh, so why are we interested in this? So the modal analysis will give us the mode shapes of the, of the clamp and the natural frequencies. And the pre-stress harmonic analysis will give us the, the displacement at these mode shapes. Or through, or the displacement within this frequency range that we're interested in. Uh, in particular, we're interested we're interested in seeing if uh, the stacks will lose contact uh, with the blade during the excitation. Um, the clamp itself is a uh, is made of aluminum, and then and then the two piezoelectric stacks are are made of piezoelectric material. So in the modal analysis, uh, th we determine the resonant frequencies and the mode shapes of the of the clamp itself. These are only four out of the 39 total resonant frequencies within the 800 to 80 kilohertz range. Um, I, I included the last, the last two at very high frequencies, which deform pretty awkwardly. And then the first, uh, I think the fifth and the sixth, I believe these are. And we're more interested in the ones on the left because of the, the type of separation the, the stacks do. And that's this type of separation will lead to um, obviously loss in contact with the blade. So in this analysis, um, we found the natural frequencies, and we were able to visually see how the clamp was going to def uh, deform. And here I provided a plot of frequency versus mode shape, just to show how uh, just to show the trend of um, how the mode shapes change with frequency. Now in the pre-stress harmonic analysis. Uh, we wanted to determine the force response at the at the piezoelectric stack surfaces where it comes in contact with the blade. In other words, we wanted to see how how much um, displacement occurs at, at that at that surface. Um, here's a, a picture of the the stack, I guess, where they during uh, around the excitation site, where uh, and it, these are the nodes where. Uh, we we do where the ANSYS software actually does its calculations or whatever, um, and then uh, in particular here in the green, those that node pair 71 and 26 demonstrated the greatest response. In other words, it, they they uh, 
deflected the most. And the, so we were interested in those particular ones. Um, and then we plotted the response for the two frequencies where the, the response was greatest and the ones that are more of more interest to us. Because anything uh, above this is actually really small and below it is actually small as well. So as you can see here, at about um, 4.8 kilohertz and 7.1 kilohertz, the, res the response peaks. And uh, we had a displacement up to close to uh, 3 to the negative 4 uh, meters and somewhere around 1.3. Um, to negative four meters. The the other plot is actually the we plotted the real part of the force response, and what we wanted to see, what this shows us is if the two nodes actually move in phase or they move out of phase. So we we preferably want this type of motion. That way we don't have lost in contact because this will be bad, and we'll lose contact when during excitation. So in the here that first. And the left side, those peaks here, this represents, and then the red one, this represents that the, the two nodes are actually in phase. And then the other one, they're actually out of phase. So we want to look at that motion as well, just uh, to make sure things will be fine during the excitation stage. Um, as far as the conclusion goes, based on the simulations conducted on ANSYS, uh, there will be a loss of contact in the piezoelectric actuators. Uh, due to the large deflections. Uh, we were looking to have deflections below 2 microns, but unfortunately they were greater than that for this particular model within this frequency range. So modifications in the geometry or the mature properties are going to have to be made, and then the simulations are going to be done again. Once the simulations are satisfactory, we're going to move on to characterizing the page electric stacks and, uh, and the force sensor and doing some more preliminary experimentation, uh, and then eventually build this thing. Uh, ultimately, the ultimate goal is to have a fully automated system that will um, that will be computerized and and go in there, excite the blade, and then come out and we could and so that it's repeatable in any way possible. Uh, this picture here is the uh, the piezoelectric stack in particular that we're using for for the design. It's a, it's five millimeters uh, long, so it's a pretty small um, stack. Other than that, uh, that concludes what I did this summer. And I wanted to thank everybody involved, uh, Mike Nazareth. I wanted to thank uh, the SROP program, the University of Michigan. And I also wanted to thank uh, my, professor, uh, my professor, Bogdan Aparana, for all his help. Thank you.